my friends. I hope your day is going great. I am excited to share some favorites with you in this video. They're pretty much all makeup related. I've got a few brushes and just some little random odds and ends that I want to tell you about. And first off, I want to talk about a couple of different foundations I've really been enjoying. One of them is my It Cosmetics CC Plus Illumination. And this is a rediscovered favorite. I have had this in my stash for a while. I feel like when I think about reaching for a product like this, I usually go for just the regular version. It's great. It's got great coverage. It's very like foundation-like in the coverage, but it still provides a great amount of moisture. This is the kind of product that really, truly can be, especially this time of year, my moisturizer, my foundation. You know, it's just sun protection. It's great. But more recently, I've been going for my Illumination one, and I wear it in the shade medium, and there's just a lot of things coming together right for this product to work for me right now. It's just the absolute perfect shade. I love the amount of glow and it is pretty glowy. Like in the scope of glowy foundations, I would say this is toward the more extreme end of the products I own, but I'm not having a real issue with uneven skin texture right now or pores and things that just really show bumpiness on my skin. I'm not having that issue. So this performs pretty well. If you are having a lot of that issue, I wouldn't really advise any sort of glowy foundation that's going to exaggerate those things. It's got great staying power. Like I said, it is my moisturizer and foundation in one. It's got the pump, the SPF 50. I mean, I've just been wearing this a lot lately and feeling so happy with the look. And I've been doing my makeup a lot like over the past weekend. This was what kind of solidified this for me. Um, we had company here and I don't like to, you know, banish myself off to the makeup room if I know we've got people here. So I'll like put some makeup that I know I'm going to use in a little bag and I'll go downstairs and just, you know, chit chat with whoever. And I was sitting in front of a window putting this on and, you know, natural broad daylight, bright daylight can be kind of harsh and it can really tell the truth about how your makeup looks. And I had this on in that circumstance, really getting a super clear look at my skin in natural light. And I thought this looks fantastic. So very pleased with that rediscovered love. And as I segue into my next foundation product, this has good staying power for me. This next one I'm going to mention, I think has even more reliable staying power. This, you know, you get it out under certain circumstances. It's already glowy. Your skin gets a little sweaty or dewy and, you know, it can be a lot of dew going on. Just be aware of what circumstances you're taking it into. This stuff, the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation Plus Concealer, I wear this in the shade Buttermilk and it always makes me think of a buttermilk pancake or a waffle. I love this stuff. I talked about it in my long wearing makeup essentials video and um, it's kind of an opposite animal, you know, compared to this one because it's not glowy. It is not a dewy type of product. I think the finish is overall, it sets to a very matte finish. Super long wearing, super full coverage. Diet Cosmetics has good coverage too, but across the board, if you're wanting the most flawless look on your skin, the glowy stuff doesn't give you as flawless and even of a look as a matte finish will, just because it's more perfected. It's even even more evenness across the skin. When you're wearing something glowy, like I'm wearing the It Cosmetics today, you know, it's catching the light in a few more places. And yes, it looks natural and glowy and nice, but it's not necessarily going to make your skin look you know, super perfect all over. This stuff does have the giant buck foot applicator, as I call it, not doe foot, it's buck foot. I believe I had a little demo applying this um, in that long wearing makeup essentials video, if you wanna see that. Um, but I have been enjoying this very much and just phenomenal staying power with that product. Also, I wanna point out the brush that I've been using with this, I forgot to mention. I've just been using the Sigma um, Angled Top Kabuki F84. This is just one of my favorite dense brushes. I like my F80 as well, which is just the classic flat top kabuki. Um, this little bit of angle, I don't know, it just makes it really easy to get around like this zone with your foundation, every little nook and cranny. And like I said, if I'm just doing my makeup in various spots in the house, I'm not maybe gonna worry about a beauty blender and dampening that and then where do I put it so it can dry out. So I just like throw a brush in my bag and that paired with this has really maximized the coverage of this product. Um, as far as the Clinique Beyond perfecting. I can use this one with this as well. Um, a beauty blender is nice with this also. I found both to work nicely. And the finishing touch of any makeup look for me these days has been this product, the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer Mist.
list. It says 12 hour power, electrolytes, energize, and hydrate skin. It's oil free, silicone free, and alcohol free. And this is my favorite setting spray. I really don't use it from the primer mist standpoint. I don't prep my skin with it. Although you could, you know, if you felt like you just wanted a little something extra after you moisturized or something. But um, I have used, as I hold it to the light, I can see that I've used maybe a little over half of this right now. And um, it says it contains coconut water, hydration for up to 12 hours. It really, you know, for me, it's all about the finished look of the makeup once it's done. And if you've had to powder certain areas, if you've had to go over some spots, you put this on and it's like everything has a little bit more consistently glowy and skin-like appearance, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So love that stuff. And speaking of powder, you might be curious exactly how much powder am I wearing on top of this stuff, the glowy CC cream. And I really make a point to powder and set the under eye. So I've gone ahead and applied this all over, concealed the under eye, set that with some powder, set my nose with powder and a little bit in center of the forehead. And everything else is kind of being allowed to just glow on through. So that's, that's where we're at with that product. Several blushes have just really had me excited lately and they are the more understated neutral-ish blushes from the City Color Be Matte line. I really like applying these and then I'll take whatever highlight I feel like wearing on top and just kind of mess with the look, you know? Um, these are pretty on their own. They're very pigmented and there's something I like about a really pigmented blush, but just by the nature of its color, it's still a subtle shade that really looks like, yeah, that could come from one's skin, you know? They have some bright shades too and a lot of people may enjoy those as well, but I, these are just what I've been going for for daily wear. I've got this papaya shade, which I can't open it. It looks really great if you um, throw on like uh, a peachy highlight, like Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick in, what's it called? Nectar. That looks great over this. Papaya I would describe as like dusty peach. You know, it's not a really pure bright corally peach, but it's just got that little bit of dusty neutral thing happening. And then one that goes just a little bit deeper. Well, it looks like on camera it's quite a bit deeper. I'm wearing this one today. I wore it very softly, but this color called Hibiscus has a little more brown happening in it. I'll swatch that here beside and you can see what I'm talking about. It's kind of a, a similar feel to a Benefit Dallas. It's got a little more plummy brown happening in there and it looks nice I think kind of lower on the cheek. And then the other one that I'm liking for a bit cooler look is the color Blackberry. So this is an interesting shade, isn't it? It's got a little pink in there, a little lilac happening, but yet it's somewhat muted. It's not super bright. And I think you'll see that here in the swatch, you know, cool tone, but just not shouting at you. So I love all of those blushes. I can find a lot of City Color blushes at uh, Five Below. You can also check the City Color website for the full selection because I think there are still some shades that don't get stocked in Five Below. Eye products, you know, if you watch my Singles Cruise video, I have been bouncing around to a lot of different things. Um, it was, you know, a few different palettes before and then all those different singles that I tried. But a brush that I want to mention that I've really just been, you know, grabbing for, it's really getting into that regular routine for me, is this Sigma E57, the Firm Shader. Look at this kind of unique unique brush that I've got here. It's not super wide. I would say it might even be just a hair more narrow um, looking across the ferrule this way left to right. A little more narrow than my Sonia Kashuk small shadow brush but as I turn it um, a quarter turn there you can see it's a little bit thicker. It's a little more fat. Bristles are nicely tapered but I can do so many things with this. This can pack shadow on the lid. This is really, really easy to get an outer V going. And it just really fits that crease area nicely. So I find if I'm going for a quick eye look, this is a great thing to pick up because it can just kind of transition from one part of the eye to the next so easily. I can highlight inner corner, pack it on the lid, do something deeper on the outside, carry it right into the crease. It's so, so easy. So again, that is the Firm Shader E57. I want to talk lip products. Um, I posted a blog. Yes, the blog is happening, folks. And I posted about this Anastasia lip gloss set. This is the summer gloss set. I bought this off of the Anastasia website. Uh, same time I bought Modern Renaissance and uh, another couple things that you might hear me talk about in the future. 
and these glosses just blew my mind. I really love them. You've got a couple nice neutrals here. One is a true classic pink. This one has a little bit of a pearly finish and then a couple of berry shades. And I blogged about them, showed each one of them on my lips, swatched them. I give you a much closer look at everything that's happening um, in that post and a very detailed account of exactly why I like these. But I tell you what, they really come through as what you see is what you get type colors. So comfortable though. Not thick and sticky, yet they don't drift outside my lip line. They are so pleasant to apply. It's a nice kind of flattened out doe foot applicator as opposed to the traditional kind of scoop like doe foot. So even with a more intense shade like this, you feel like you've got all the control you need to get out to the outer edges of your lips with it. I love the way these smell. I feel like the wear is very even. Um, so even as you lose the gloss, I still have a really nice look to my lips after that point and I'm just you know loving those as far as lip glosses go I think those are fantastic so I've never really gotten huge into any of the Anastasia lip products at all I know the liquid lipsticks are super popular and I've only got one of them you know I, I kind of haven't really fully jumped on the bandwagon of that stuff but I was just like shocked by how good the lip glosses are now in the drugstore marketplace a new kind of glossy lip product that I think is so, so cool are these Maybelline Color Jolts. I got these in the shade Orange Outburst, which is probably my favorite, and then I also got Never Bear. Now, my one gripe is you're not getting a lot of product in here. It's 0.21 fluid ounces. That's less than like a lip tar that's quite a bit less than let's say a NYX butter gloss. But that being said these are very concentrated lip products. There's a lot of intensity even in my lighter shade. You know I'm wearing some of that today and I used another product that I love. Uh, this e.l.f. matte lip color in praline. I use that to kind of tone it down. It's a very true pink I feel on my lips and I just wanted to neutralize it just a hair. But they're very true pure uh, fully opaque colors. The packaging says intense lip paint and they do kind of remind me of like a cross between a lip tar and a Too Faced Melted. The application design, you know, the product coming up through this little spongy tip is very much like Too Faced Melted, but um, there's a little more like moisture content in the product. These have a little more shine, I feel like, on the lips. And on the 4th of July, I was wearing this orange shade and the staying power was just tremendous with it. And of course, I was eating and, you know, doing my thing, talking not really caring about my lip product and it's just a lot of color and it really does a good job of hanging on there so if you're looking for a new you know little drugstore lip product to experiment with one that really um, packs a punch color wise I can't remember what I paid for these but I am you know definitely thinking about getting some more and as I alluded to here the elf praline. I am wearing that just a little bit mixed in with the pink and you can see it's very brownish and neutral and it's just a great nude or pink lip mixer type product. These e.l.f. matte lip colors in general, great formula happening there. A lot of people don't know that there's a little sharpener at the bottom so if you want to refine that tip a little bit more you totally can but um, that's definitely one of e.l.f.'s better lip products. And one last thing I want to mention, Neutrogena Moisture Smooth Color sticks in case you weren't aware and I did this video months back but they have released new shades in this line a lot of what they had almost everything they had when these initially launched this all of the shades had a little bit of shimmer to them and now they've released a lot more creamy ones and this pink nude is one of the creamies and it's still got you know that nice little bit of thickness very nice moisturization I mean if my lips are the least bit chapped this is the kind of thing color wise that I'll want to put on and and that's the pink nude. I think it's gorgeous. You can mix it with other things. You can just slap it on and wear it alone, but low maintenance sweatpants of lip products. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's a great, great thing. And I think a lot of people would like this pink nude shade. So that's it. Those are my favorites for the month of June. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again for all the nice feedback on the singles cruise. That was a collaboration with my friend Kristen Game and uh, the mastermind behind that whole idea was David. So David, thank you again for just spurring a little creativity in us and um, it was just really a fun little project to be part of. So thank you guys again. I will talk to you very soon. Bye.